Hello and welcome back to Scrum Mechanic. In this video, I am showing how to make my new, oops, my new um, independent suspension design. I keep dropping things. <laughs> so yeah, I'm showing how to make my new independent suspension. This design allows you to have longer arms on it. So therefore, your wheel won't travel in and out as much. I just realized the camera's a little off. Ah, uh, whatever. So, I'll show you my old design. This is my old design. You've got your turning here and then your hinge here and here, and it limits you more to your arm length than that design over there does. And that's not good. And this doesn't look as good either. So, I decided to figure it a new way. And that's what I did. So instead of having it connect on the bottom here, and then having to use a arm and whatnot, I made it so that... Two, just let me lift this up a bit more. I made it so that it can connect to the plate here and then the lower arm rotates on the same point, roughly the same point, where the wheel attaches instead of below it and whatnot, like it should for this design. Except it doesn't work in this truck because this is meant to be a uh, an all-wheel drive stadium truck. So this arm should be lower, but oh well. But anyways, so I put a plate here, then a plate up, and then these two plates take up these two plates take up one block. So it allows me to put a bearing and whatnot on the side, and then do it like that. So I will show how to build it. For the most part, it is like my other suspension. I'm just going to move the wheels back for more space. So what you'll want to do is, to get things ready, you want your pipes, like on the bottom here. I'll be using invisible bearings. Actually, no. I'll use the normal ones just to make it easier. And then you'll need to go to the Durf mod, or the mod pack, as it's called. Link will be in the description. Go to that, and you use do these plates here. The small pipe connector, and the surface panel small. And a little ball bouncing around. Okay, so. You take a T. Um, depending on how you want to do it, if you want to have realistic steering, you'll use this piece. But if you just want it simple, just use a T. I'll be going simple right for now. And then what I do is I put a bearing on the top and on the bottom. Top and bottom. I use a flat panel. And then drop it off the lift. You have to drop it off the lift so the bearings aren't in sticky mode. Because if it's on the lift, say you have this. And then I'll put a bearing there. Actually, I gotta put this over one. And a bearing here. If you put something in between them, See how they're both green? That means it's going to attach to both. Whereas if you take it off the lift, it only at it's supposed to only attach to the one. With the experience I've had with it. But that's a new thing they put in the update that's kind of annoying. Or in a update. So yeah, you take it off the lift and put it on the edge of the bottom panel. That way, it is still within the same block. This, the bottom panel, is taking up a block space under this, but this panel is within this block space. Therefore, 
you can put a bearing on the front. Then what I like to do is just use one upper arm to uh, save space. Like so. Now, you will need a part that I forgot. You'll need the small MGM pipe angled. And that is so it stays out of the way of the wheel. The wheel will still hit a little bit because of this part, but it won't be as bad as if you use the uh, normal elbows. And by this point, you should already have the vehicle and whatnot built. Or the body. So then, this will be... Uh, I'll use glass to show the center. So that's my center. And I want to attach lower arms to here and here. Then you've just got your your seat and whatnot over here. So what I do is I decide how much wheel travel I want. For basic low wheel travel, you go here on both ends. Approach. Like so, and then you go one, bring this out too. Also, not two as in two. And then, oops, like so. Then we bring this up. Put your bearings and your elbows, like so. And then you weld it together. And there you go. That is basically it. That's basically all you have to do. But to make it look better, you bring the pipes out to match on this side. One issue I have with this is I can never get the panel to go on this side also. I don't know why. But whatever. Like you can put it there. Come on. You can put it like that. But you can't put it on the inside also. But that doesn't really matter. So as I said before, just bring it over like that. And then it'll look like it has a proper lower arm. And then what I like to do is the side with the bearings, I put bearing for the suspension there also, or the spring. And then another T. So depending on the wheel travel you want, you'll choose whether you want a long or short spring. This I'm just going to go with a uh, short spring. Now there's two ways you could do this. I'm going to show the simple way. And that is... You put it back on the lift, because I forgot to. <laughs> okay, so you've got your spring, your arms and your spring. Then you put an elbow going away from this arm. You can have this arm on the back if you want, it doesn't matter. As long as this elbow is going away from the upper arm. That's it away. Then you put your bearings like that and like that. Bring this back. I and mean, then I like to go to the front just to save space. Shut up phone. And then connect it like this. And load it. And that's that. That's that's it done. So I will remove all the yellow. And then as I said, your seat and whatnot will be over here. And then you just use a controller to control your uh, spring preload. Like so. 
and then you connect the bottom to your seat. Actually, I'll, I'll put it on a seat just to make it clearer. Attach the bottom to your seat, and then I need to sneeze. Or not. Uh, I thought I had a sneeze. And then you will want a bearing on the wheel also, so we'll take the wheel off, put a bearing on it. Like so. Now that's the simple one. And the only mod you will need is the standard mod pack. Now, for my more complicated uh, design, the one I used on the stadium truck and the class 1 buggy, instead of using these, I used pistons. Which I find removed some lag. So what you want to do is Use this as normal, but go down, and then I'm only going to have the piston go down by one. I also just messed up. You need to bring this past the lower arm so it doesn't hit. And then you bring it down. Then I'm going to go down one from there. Um. No, that's not that's not gonna work how I wanted it to. Okay, so we're just gonna go here just to make it simple. And then go like that for now. Nope. That's not right either. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do. Bring this up. Move the seat over, over, that's not high enough. Bring this up one more. So, and then put your piston on. For an independent suspension, you need three pistons. For a straight axle, you only need two. Where the piston go? Um, there it is. Okay. So then you put your piston there. It could move, it could go this way a bit more. Like, I recommend mounting it on this side, but oh well. And then use a panel like so and then bring this out but not too far you don't want it to get in the way of the wheels so I'm going to go in line with this And then you put another, not like that, <laughs> you put these on, and then pistons going in, like so. And then you connect your pistons to the spring, and then the same on uh, the other side, but I just messed up. What you want to do is use the panels to give you more room. Like so. So then I'll do the same on this side. If you don't use the panels, they won't be able to move proper. And there we go. There's this design. And then you can put like your engine and stuff here, but for now I'm gonna put the So 
so you put controller to your pistons. If you want it to go right away, you put your controller to the pistons, and then set each to one. For this setup, you set each, set each to one. And as you can see, it has now tilted springs in and compressed them. And I prefer this design. It seems a little bit more compact. It seems to work a little bit better. Less laggy. Less bearings. So yeah. And as I said, with the back, like with a straight axle, you'll just use two. One to push them forwards and one to push them down. And then I'll show the uh, three in the front of this. I have the one under, like in the, would you stop it? I have the one in the firewall pushing it down and then the ones that push in are on either side in front of it. I'll show from the back. There you can kind of see it better. I'm gonna put it on the lift. And... Thought I saw something on the ground. So the middle one pushes down on this part. This part goes over here and up to these ones. Then these go to the springs. And then these are just bump stops, as I usually do. But yeah, that is it. And you just, oops. Just connect your wheel. There you go. If you connect just the bottom, it'll automatically turn the right way. Yeah. And then you're ready to go. I'll show this working on my uh, stadium buggy really quick. Here we go. So for for compressing it, I used my old my old design. But you can see the arms are the same. I hear it bouncing, where is it? Ah, uh, whatever. And then the back is just simple. But yeah. And then it binds a tiny bit. If you look at the... Yeah, you can see it kind of changed camber a bit when I turn. That's from it binding a bit. But other than that, it works fine. So yeah. I will go back over and... Just stare at that for a second. Oh, I deleted that thing, didn't I? I did. I didn't mean to delete that. So I will look at this one. These. It's down. Up. There we go. Just a quick look to show. Where the, uh, the pipes go. So I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment. And thanks for watching.